All right, well, thank you for waiting until the end. And I promise this uh, lecture is going to be as brief as it can be, uh, no more than 15 minutes. Um, basically, I'm a pediatric surgeon. My practice is in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm originally from Spain. Uh, came to United States to do my general surgery training and pediatric surgery. And this is our new free and standing uh, children's hospital that was opened uh, three months ago. We're going to talk uh, briefly about um, historical remarks, uh, what uh, robotic surgery means in pediatric surgery, uh, what's the advantages and disadvantages, and how I use it, and then um, how I start a program um, on February 28th. And I remember the date because obviously there was a lot of work to be done before to get that point. And briefly, what's the uh, future expectations? As a disclosure, I don't have anything to do with the company. I uh, don't get any support. Uh, three remarks about what uh, robotics in some way has been introduced in the surgical practice. The robot, it doesn't do anything unless you want to. So basically, it extends human capabilities rather than replacing human surgeons. I've never done a case where I can be on my boat, well, I don't have a boat, unless, and someone the robot doing it, so it does not apply for, it does apply for radiology, not for us. We have a Puma 560 uh, ProBot and RoboDoc. Those are a different, um, a small robot that were applied for different things like a brain biopsy, CT guided, that you can use it for a prostatectomy or even for orthopedic cases. Another equipment that uh, maybe you are familiarized with that, is ASOP, Hermes, Socrates, and the Seuss robotic. Um, those devices were supposed in some way to help you uh, doing laparoscopic surgery. Uh, Hermes, yes, uh, for instance, it was a centralized voice command and recognition system for the medical devices. We used it for some time, but then we were sick because the uh, machine didn't recognize my voice uh, or my partner's voice. So. We used it for some time, but the bottom line, these uh, things came in and probably are not using anymore. The Sears robotic uh, was the uh, first prototype that were used for robotic surgery, in, mainly in adults, but as well in pediatrics, and mainly were used uh, in the animal lab. This uh, company, uh, I never used a Sears robotic uh, equipment, but it probably was uh, pretty, pretty good. But the market make it that this one disappear, and we we got the only one in the market that it was FDA approved um, in 2000, uh, and it's called the Vinci system. And once again, I'm nothing to do with the company. The uh, company Intuitive Surgical absorb and merge with the previous company, yes, to uh, become the only company. Uh, that manufactures uh, robotic equipment for the surgery. So what's a robot look like? In, this is the only one, and once again, I try to remove some names here and there just to make it impartial, but there are several, portion, several parts of this equipment. Uh, basically, uh, we have what we call the pig. Two arms are controlled by the surgeon, the camera is controlled by the surgeon, and this is an additional arm for the second generation of these robots. So in other words, a year ago there were only three, and this is the new generation with four arms, and the surgeon by itself has control of those uh, all the time. This is the surgeon's console, where the surgeon will sit in front of it, it will lean uh, on a monitor back here, and you have all sort of different buttons to press. You will rest your arms, and the arm rests here. I will show you other pictures. But basically, you have a monitor, the manual controls, and the pedals. Pedals, five total, but can add it more if you want to use harmonic scarpel. 
just to give you an example, this first pedal here is to clutch your instrument so you can reposition without moving your instruments. The second one is just to clutch and move uh, the camera by yourself. So you can zoom out, you can move by yourself, just moving with your hands. The one on the middle is just to make it focus of the camera. So whenever range you are from the target, you can modify that. You have two more pedals here, and you don't know where to put your feet. <laughs> there is no much room. So you have one pedal for bipolar, one for monopolar, and you need an harmonic carpal. You need to extend your leg outside to get your pedal for the harmonic. Briefly, the Vinci system is a sophisticated robotic platform designed to expand the surgeon's capability and offers a minimally invasive option for major surgery. I took it that from the company. It provides intuitive control, and that's true. Wide range of motion, it's true. And fine tissue manipulation capability, and it's uh, really true, as well as the 3D visualization. This is Dr. Kemps uh, sitting on the console. I was doing a performing uh, live surgery. Uh, once again, you lean on the um, uh, monitor here. You, you're, uh, you have a binocular, so you look through both sides that make it 3D vision. And then you raise your arm here. You have different bottoms that has a different options. Uh, you can use it for fine movements or normal movements, and that will decrease the tremor of your hands. At the same time, you can turn a button just to make it 30 degrees, 30 degrees up, 30 degrees down. So you have all sort of different options and handy. That's how it looks, the manual control. You put one finger here, the other one here, usually the thumb and the index. And this is the way that it's uh, working. I'm going to show you that in the next few slides. So while I'm sitting here, uh, you have a high definition screens throughout the room so everybody can watch it. You have surgical tag. They don't do anything because basically you have control of all the equipment except for pulling or uh, introducing new instruments. The arms, once again, are here. And this was uh, four um, kilograms, um, I'm sorry, nine kilograms kit for a Nissan fund application. Once again, you can see the definition. Um, the uh, CRNA or the anesthesia team um, will struggle in some way because depends the procedure that you perform things are going to change, and I will show you yes in a few seconds. This is the scope. There are two platforms, one the 12 millimeters, that's the one that we have in the hospital, and a few months ago they came up with a 8.5 millimeters. They are heavy, they are very bulky, but they don't lean on the patient, they are dock on the uh, robotic arms. This is the what it makes uh, 3D, and obviously it's a high resolution, you can tell how you can see it through the uh, uh, monitor. There are 40 different instruments, and to make it uh, easy, uh, just choose the ones I'm going to use. This is a regular grasper. That's how it looks. Look at the uh, fringe. Uh, and provides uh, thousand different movement that you can do, or something unthinkable. And then this is the, uh, the cartridge where you put it on the, um, on the robot arm. Right here. This is a video where you can see in the animal lab hands and how that make it your instrument move. This is a 6.0 uh, suture and uh, it's in the animal lab repairing a uh, ureter. Basically, what we did um, in part of the credentialing to be able to do the surgeries in my hospital. I went to Houston and I went to the animal lab and we were able to do in four hours about 10 different procedures from taking the gallbladder, taking um, uh, the nephrectomy, uh, doing the ureter surgery for anastomosis, uh, palatoplasty, needs some fund application, 
Um, we cannot do in pigs uh, a splenectomy because the size, but we were able to do uh, intracorporeal anastomosis of small bowel. So one pig uh, for eight or ten procedures. So what are the advantages? I believe that it simplifies the surgical technique. I have no question about it. It's better visualization, high uh, resolution 3D camera. The filter and simplest translation of the surgeon's tremor and improve the sterility in the small body cavities. Um, for me, it was unthinkable to do uh, anastomosis in four kilogram baby end-to-end uh, -end intracorporeal anastomosis. And even didn't trust myself, so I opened, since the, uh, we use a 12 millimeter spore, I brought the anastomosis outside just to believe. So I touch it and I believe on that. Um, obviously, uh, make it uh, able to use MIS in complex procedures. But what are the disadvantages? There's a lot. A lot for pediatric surgery. Um, prolonged time for surgical room setup. And everyone who has been involved in laparoscopy, minimal invasive surgery, we know that in the learning process, there is time you spend just setting up the OR. Well, robotic cases take double. Because the patients are in different positions, because the car comes from a different place, so the anesthesia has to make it up to move the uh, tubes in a different position as well. So it's, it's a little hectic. There is no tactile sensation. I don't know if I'm touching something or not. I can see it. But if I lose the tip of my instrument, I don't know what it is. There is no way that you can know what it is. So you can easily perforate the bowel. I haven't done it, but I heard about it. So the force feedback provides a substitute for tactile sensation, but that's not enough because that can be late, and mostly in babies. So you keep all the time your instruments on your surgical field, on your monitor, so you know where are they. It's heavy and bulky equipment. And basically, the robot is taller than me. And when you get an imperforate anus that I did it with the robot, obviously you don't see the baby, you see only arms and a robot. But it make it possible. And I did it, and, and it really, really didn't struggle. I think that really helped me out dramatically. Operational cost is, is too expensive. I can give you all sort of different details, but just the machine, the whole equipment was bought by my hospital, about $1.6 million. Um, the company is trying to convince me to get um, the um, a scope instead of 12 millimeters when I always have used three or five millimeters, they're trying to convince me to buy the 8.5 millimeters. The difference in price is $70,000. Well, no way. It's too expensive. Just to decrease a few millimeters. If I jump from five millimeters to 12 millimeters, it makes no sense to spend that money to become, to use a, yes, a little smaller. Uh, there is a cost on equipment, cost on operative room, and a staff for training. But just to give you an idea, um, each instrument that you use is recognized by the computer or the machine. And then in adults, you can use it 10 times. The 11th time, the machine will not let it work. Then you need to replace that one. And that costs $4,000, US dollars. In pediatrics, we're talking about 20 times. And they told me, listen, you have 20 times to use it. Okay, well, how much will it cost to replace it? $4,000. So it's too expensive. Reimbursement. No one is paying at this point for pediatric surgery using robotics has been proved for prostatectomy that decreases the length of stay. You can save money to keep the patient in the hospital two days instead of five. But in pediatrics, um, we do it if we have it, but I don't expect that anyone is going to pay me anything for that. So it's a cost for the hospital. So how I use it? Well, really, it's really easy. 
It's really easy. It's very intuitive. Um, it's really, really hard going from open surgery, traditional surgery, to laparoscopic surgery. It's easier to do robotics than do laparoscopic surgery. So there is no learning curve. You need to know how to work. You, know, to, you need to know how to put the things in place. So, but there is no, it's not difficult. So you need to establish your robotic team, people that are willing to help you to do this surgery while you're sitting not on the patient, just a few yards away. Position of the patient table, and an anesthesia card and a robotic card, we'll, we'll show you in a second. Position the robotic ports in camera. This is completely different. What you have learned putting your ports for laparoscopic surgery, it does not apply for robotics. You need to have the scope just on the target of your um, organ that you want to work with. And you need to have 10 centimeters for each port away from the camera and it has to be symmetric. So that's my team that make it possible. Um, nurse, surgical tech, CRNAs, and surgical tech. But look at the machine. And I'm 6'3". So I have to uh, establish uh, some way to uh, make it more efficient. So I came up with a software where I can create by myself all these drawings. So the nurse in the room can know where the patient is going to be. And I promise it's not simple. Where the robot is going to be and where I'm going to stand and where's the position of the patient. And that for each procedure that I do. And you know what? They don't look it up. They wait for me to get to the room. So I waste my time. But I might look nice here. So, and believe me, yes, do that in a computer. I spend a few times. So that's digital GI. The bottom line is digital GI um, is for anything in the pelvis or pull throughs. And then the patient head is right here close to the card, the anesthesia card. And then basically the positioning of the patient and it screens all throughout the, the room. Once again, they don't look it up. For nephrectomy or bowel, like the one I did, uh, the duplication cyst, well, once again, you need to target where is the organ. You need to put the camera in the same way and your instruments 10 centimeters away. And sometimes in a four kilogram baby, we're talking about flank. In addition to that, the smaller is the patient, more pat to add. And that makes you very uncomfortable. So what's my short experience on that? First of all, and before anything, I love it. I have a good time. I started, uh, I have so far 34 surgical cases. So the hospital gave me uh, one day a week, Friday. No one won a Friday, so that's for me. And, and I started booking one case on, on Friday just to make life easier for everyone. And now I'm just booking two cases. And then other laparoscopic cases just put in regular time. So you wonder if it's worth to spend that money for a appendicostomy, for a gallbladder, for a G-tube. Well, the answer is no. But at the same time, I'm going to feel comfortable to do uh, an erectile malformation and doing well. So I need to go for the simple cases at the beginning. So I have some critics that, well, you're using robots for gallbladders. I say, OK. Just wait. Those three cases were put on the same day the company provides a proctor in pediatric surgery with experience in robotics. So I came to the hospital and I looked for, obviously, three few simple things that, um, that were done with no problems. Well, in green, I put the ones that it really makes a difference. 
really makes a difference. Uh, Hellermyotomy, they have one so far during this time. Imperfect anus that went amazingly nice. And Teddy duplication cyst that it went really, really nice. I did on Friday, the baby went home Sunday because mom asked to go home. And my partner said, there's no way you're still two days post-op and say, my baby's eating completely fine and has already bowel movements. The fact that everything was done intracorporeal, I don't know, I guess makes a big difference. And this was a mass excision. Hopefully that comes uh, straight, otherwise I will need. Uh, this is uh, just a robotic nissen. Just to, not to show up uh, uh, nissen from duplication, everybody does it. It's just to give you a sense how the instrument work. Look at how I, and I did it purpose, uh, I did in purpose just to show you, look at this angle here. I mean, um, in laparoscope, you work with your shoulders and you bend and you go back and forth. Here, you use just only your fingers. All the uh, rotation is just through the machine, through the instruments. So once again, uh, I don't want to describe anything during the procedure, but just look how the camera goes closer, zooms out. And I do it in purpose just to show you that. Not, in fact, because the case, but just to show you in this presentation. Uh, once again, uh, I mean, the definition is, yes, the, the first one I did, I said, my goodness, that's the vagus nerve, or what is this? I thought it was the vagus nerve because of the position, but everything was so huge that even magnifies more than the laparoscope. So I have a good room here, um, but let me show you once again, the purpose of this video is just to show you how the instrument moves around. This is the vagus nerve. I've never seen something that big. And you see how the instruments rotate. So in this case, it is just uh, very easy. Um, Add it, let's say, a G-tube, and a patient with a BP shunt, where the colon is all stuck in the anterior abdominal wall. So basically, in the, I did it uh, before I came in here and make it really, really uh, easier. Uh, I'm not really good tying in knots, intracorporeal, uh, but I feel I'm good with the robot. That didn't justify the spend, neither the cost, but I usually put one here, one to tack the esophagus, one to tack in the diaphragm. But once again, I want to show you how the instrument rotates. That is just unbelievable. So once again, um, showing after pulling back the uh, bougie um, that everything remains uh, mobile and one or two or three centimeters wide and uh, nissen. Uh, one of the problems is you want a suction, you need to add another port because each instrument is dug on a that's one of the inconveniences as well. So in that case, it didn't use any suction, it was pre die So future expectations, well, what do I want? No one will listen to me, but I want smaller equipment. Something that I can carry, that I can have in my room. I don't need to go to a different room just because the equipment's so big that no one can move it. Something that has no cords. And obviously a reduced cost that everyone can afford it. Briefly, uh, I went through all this in order to be able to uh, perform the surgeries in my hospital, basically all purple work. In summary, technology is moving so fast that it's transforming our way of practicing surgery. I love laparoscopic minimal invasive surgery, but robotics uh, make it really, really, really easy, and I like it. Nonetheless, 
Nonetheless, nothing should change our compassion, compassion to provide care to our little patients. So you are not able to do it, or things doesn't go as, as the way you expect. No matter how much you like technology, um, you better convert to traditional. So technology can go as fast as a cheetah. But once again, if you don't adjust that technology, you better take it by yourself. Run, run, and get it by yourself. <laughs> and there's no problem. The cheetah got upset. You just take it away. You have control all the time of what you're doing. By the way, this has um, voice. It's pretty f even funnier. So. I should have probably start with this uh, slide. This is my senior partner. Uh, this is one of my residents. Uh, in fact, he trained, uh, he went to medical school in Duke, um, North Carolina. Um, this is a poor baby uh, with the abdomen deflated after we finished the anorectal malformation. But the picture is not really for the baby. We already finished uh, surgery. The picture is not because the resident that he was really good for his two months, is to dedicate my senior partner, who allow me to become what I want to be. Um, so I'm very proud to be his partner. Thank you. Any questions? By the way, I have some robotics outside. If someone brought money, I can sell it. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, just, just, uh, just an observation regarding the costs as it stands in India. Uh, this machine is marketed by J. Mitra and Company in India. Uh, it costs between three and a half to four crores. Uh, each hand instrument is about 25,000 rupees. And as you mentioned, you, know, you can use it X number of times and the machine says no more. Uh, there are two installed in India at present, one in Escorts Hospital and one in All India Institute. All India Institute machine, I think, is predominantly used by the urology folks. So I don't know whether the pediatric surgeons want to put their hands well, the on it. I think the, uh, Dr. Arvind Kumar uses it for thymectomy. Arvind Kumar, I saw his uh, video. That's the current status of that machine in India. So it, it well, I talk um, with my rep and uh, I have an uh, email uh, with the rep from India, and I don't know, I mean, he said that uh, actually in India there are five robots. Uh, he sent me that an email, obviously, I don't know. It's in the fitness of things that we really had the uh, very interesting talk on robotics. I'm sure there's a credit to you that so many people sat through your lecture, rap with rap attention. Thank, thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you. I also take this opportunity to invite my dear friend now, Juan Camps. In fact, we have not known uh, each other much. In fact, we went to, I went to last year to visit his place. We went there last year for South Carolina to visit Dr. Prithvi Reddy, and we just saw him and it was uh, fantastic. It was uh, instant chemistry and it was fantastic to be with him as a good friend. I had the opportunity to see him operate and he is a very good laparoscopic surgeon. So we take this opportunity to thank you, sir, for volunteering to come at his own cost. Thank you very much. As I said uh, previously, uh, this is my six, uh, six years in my career. Um, it's been a pleasure, honor, since the first time that I uh, came here to India. When I received the invitation, it uh, was uh, through my senior partner that I respect uh, uh, deeply. He's uh, a pediatric surgeon who has done good things for our community in South Carolina. And he has been in practice for 30 years. Uh, he is uh, native from Bangalore. Uh, 
from Islamabad, I, Hyderabad, I'm sorry, but he uh, went to uh, Bangalore College of Medicine. Um, I dedicate that to him. He made it possible as my senior partner, facilitate uh, my trip, my traveling, uh, doing a minimal invasive show. Thank you for all you, for what you're doing possible for me. Thank you very much.